Some kill to fill a missing part of their life, and some kill for the hell of it, and others kill for both. Today we discuss the co-ed killer, Edmund Kemper. Let's open the serial killer file. Edmund Kemper was born in 1948 in Burbank, California. He exhibited surprising intelligence at a very early age. Edmund was born the middle child with two sisters. He looked up to his father greatly, but his mother was an abusive alcoholic who belittled Edmund any chance she got. His sisters offered no solace from his mother's assaults, as he was often pushed around by them as well. Edmund was a large boy for his age, tall and strong, but aside from favorable features, he demonstrated extremely troubling behaviors. Edmund carried the traits of many serial killers. He was not only antisocial, but sadistic. Even as a young boy, he craved death. He took his family's cat and buried it alive, eventually only to dig it back up and cut off its head to mount on a stick. The time came when Edmund's parents eventually got divorced and Edmund was forced to live with his mother out in Montana. This loss of connection with his father devastated Edmund, and his life with his mother only became worse. Aside from the constant abuse, his mother would force Edmund to sleep in a locked basement because she believed he would rape his younger sister if he wasn't locked away. The abuse led to Edmund running away from home some time later and returning to California to find his father. But once he found him, he discovered that his father had remarried and even had another son. Edmund stayed with his father for a short time before Edmund's father forced him to go back and live with his mother. But his mother wanted no part in it and sent Edmund to live with his grandparents. By this time, he was 15 years old. His inner turmoil was building up pressure, which released during an argument with his grandmother. He grabbed a rifle and shot his grandmother in the head killing her instantly. Edmund, being as strong as he was, had no issue in dragging his grandmother's dead body to hide it. Suddenly, however, he heard his grandfather's car pull up in the driveway. Afraid of his grandfather being cross with him over what he had done, he met his grandfather out in the driveway and shot him to death as well. Edmund, when questioned about the murders, claimed that he killed his grandfather to, yes, avoid punishment. However, when questioned about why he killed his grandmother, he claimed that he just wanted to know what it felt like. Edmund was sent to a psychiatric hospital where he not only did well, but befriended his psychiatrist, going so far as to even work as his assistant. Tests during this time determined that Edmund had an IQ of 136. Later into adulthood, that number would increase to 145. Despite recommendations by a number of other doctors against his release, Edmund was set free fewer than five years later. By the time he walked out of the hospital's doors, he stood at six feet nine inches tall and weighed nearly 300 pounds. His good behavior led to his criminal record being expunged and he was released to the care of his mother. Edmund had managed to fool the psychologist. He had full-blown intentions to kill now that he had a taste for it. And he would become a most dangerous combination. He would become a serial spree killer. Between 1972 and 1973, Edmund went on a murder spree, mercilessly killing female students and engaging in necrophilic sex with their corpses. He would often go hunting after his mother displayed one of her regular outbursts against him. He would often find girls hitchhiking and pick them up, take them to secluded areas where he would murder them in a number of different ways. From stabbing to shooting to smothering, he would then take their bodies back to his apartment and decapitate them, engaging in sex with their severed heads and bodies, while also dissecting them to satisfy his own morbid curiosities. One victim in particular, he took back to his mother's house and hid the body in his room. He decapitated the corpse and buried the head in his mother's garden as a joke, claiming that his mother always wanted people to look up to her. 
Edmund continued on his murderous rampage, which his mother continued to initiate unknowingly with her bad temperament, until Edmund one day decided to end the cycle. On Good Friday in 1973, Edmund was at his mother's house resting when he heard her arrive home from a party. She went to her bedroom to read a book and he stepped into her doorway. She muttered a sarcastic remark towards him, to which he said good night before beating her to death with a claw hammer. He cut off her head, raped it, and then ripped out her vocal cords and stuffed them down the garbage disposal. When the garbage disposal couldn't effectively dispose of the vocal cords and spit them back out into the sink, Edmund found it humorous, equating their resilience with her incessant bitching. After this, he phoned up his mother's best friend, invited her over, and murdered her as well. Edmund finally having gained enough courage to murder the woman who inspired him to murder, promptly went and turned himself in to police, being one of the few serial killers to ever do so. He was sentenced to life in prison, where he continues to serve today. A special shout out goes to Maria for winning the most recent contests on my website. Thank you for your dedication. If you'd like to get updates and participate in contests to win things from me, be sure to drop by my site linked in the description below. That's all in this file. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next episode of Seriously Strange, and I will see you next time. Case closed.